Tensions are high at the start of the year as the new Cold War space race is driving nations to compete for dominance in space. The moon, once abandoned decades ago, is now a prime target. Major powers are racing to establish bases and infrastructure to control the lunar surface and its resources. This is no small feat. Tremendous innovation and investment are required to survive on the moon's harsh terrain. But the potential rewards are immense, from mining rare isotopes to deploying strategic assets beyond Earth's atmosphere. The road ahead will redefine humanity's reach into the cosmos, but missteps could provoke conflict beyond our atmosphere and world. This is the new space race, a cold war played out on the lunar surface, the ultimate high ground. The moon beckons again, this time the stakes are higher than ever. A brief history on our past. The Cold War was a time of fierce competition, fueled by political tension, technological ambition and the dream of reaching beyond Earth's grasp. And in the summer of 1969, humanity achieved the impossible against the backdrop of a world holding its breath. Neil Armstrong's words echoed across the void as he took that historic step. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. But as the years passed, the moon faded from the forefront of our collective consciousness. Dreams of lunar exploration gave way to other pursuits, and the once glorious Apollo program ended. Yet just as the moon waned in our attention, so too has it waxed once more. Private enterprises like SpaceX and Blue Origin breathed new life into the dream of venturing beyond Earth's atmosphere, making the impossible seem within reach. Hidden in its craters lay water ice, a precious resource that could sustain life and be used as fuel in fusion engines for our journey to the stars. And so a new chapter began. Nations from around the globe joined hands in a quest to return to the moon. With its Chang'e missions, China blazed a trail across the lunar surface, while NASA's Artemis program promised to carry humanity back to the moon and possibly a new frontier, Mars. Thus, the world is holding its breath once more, as the stage is being set for humanity to embark on its next great adventure. Landings There are three key ways in which a ship is landed on the moon. Soft landings, where spacecraft gently touch down using rocket engines to slow descent, have been the preferred approach for ensuring the safety of both craft and crew. Precision landings, achieved through advanced guidance systems, allow for pinpoint accuracy on predetermined lunar sites. Conversely, crash landings involve impacting the lunar surface without the aim of spacecraft recovery, often serving scientific purposes. Across history, several countries have embarked on lunar landing missions. The United States, notably through NASA's Apollo program, achieved six crewed landings between 1969 and 1972, setting the stage for subsequent exploration. Similarly, the former Soviet Union accomplished significant milestones with its lunar program, achieving soft landings as early as 1966 with Lunar 9. Russia continues its lunar exploration efforts with missions like Lunar Glob and Lunar 25. China emerged as a prominent player in lunar exploration with its Chang'e program. Chang'e 3 marked China's successful soft landing on the moon in 2013, followed by missions like Chang'e 4 and Chang'e 5, further advancing scientific knowledge. India's Chandrayaan-2 mission aimed to explore the lunar surface, but the lander's hard landing in 2019 hindered its success. Why the moon? With all these major players on the board, I'm sure you're curious about the last aspect. Why the moon? And why now? We seek to establish a foothold, learning how to live and work in space for extended periods. Imagine lunar outposts, testing and refining life support systems, radiation shielding and resource management strategies. These lessons learned will be invaluable for venturing further to Mars and beyond. Secondly, beneath the moon's barren surface lies a treasure trove of resources. At the forefront is water ice, confirmed to exist in permanently shadowed craters at the South Pole. This ice can be broken down into its components, hydrogen and oxygen, vital for drinking water, rocket fuel and even breathing air for future lunar residents. Furthermore, the moon itself holds a wealth of minerals, including rare earth elements crucial for modern technology and even potentially helium-3, a potential fuel source for clean fusion energy on Earth. The moon also serves as a crucial stepping stone for our ultimate goal, setting foot on Mars. 
Imagine it as a training ground for astronauts, testing spacesuits, rovers, and communication systems in a similar but less hostile environment. We can practice in situ resource utilization, developing techniques to extract and utilize lunar resources, skills directly applicable to the Martian red dust. Additionally, the Moon offers a strategic launch pad for missions to Mars, enabling efficient fuel usage and serving as a staging ground for future journeys. This lunar renaissance isn't solely driven by one nation. It's a global effort, with countries like China, India, and Europe joining the fray. Projects like the Artemis Accords aim to establish peaceful cooperation and responsible resource management on the Moon, fostering international partnerships and shared scientific gains. Our return to the Moon is not just about scientific discovery and resource exploration. It's about igniting the human spirit of adventure and pushing our knowledge and technology boundaries. It's about inspiring the next generation of scientists, engineers, and dreamers to reach for the stars. Each step on the lunar surface is a giant leap towards a future where humanity transcends its earthly cradle and embraces the vastness of the cosmos. The Competition While scientific collaboration thrives in aspects of lunar exploration, a competitive edge simmers beneath the surface. The race to establish a permanent lunar presence has ignited, primarily between the United States, China, and other aspiring spacefaring nations like India and Russia. At the forefront of the modern lunar exploration effort stands NASA's ambitious Artemis program, poised to make history by landing the first woman and person of color on the moon by the year 2025. This groundbreaking initiative, named after the twin sister of Apollo in Greek mythology, represents a significant leap forward in humanity's quest to expand its presence beyond Earth. The program encompasses a series of missions that will build upon each other, gradually expanding our capabilities and knowledge of the lunar environment. From initial reconnaissance missions to the development of lunar habitats and resource utilization techniques, Artemis aims to lay the groundwork for a long-term human presence on the Moon. China's lunar aspirations have also surged forward with remarkable consistency, propelled by their ambitious Chang'e program. Boasting a series of successful robotic missions, China has firmly established itself as a formidable contender in the race for lunar exploration. But their ambitions extend far beyond unmanned missions, as they set their sights on executing a crude landing on the lunar surface in the 2030s, marking a historic milestone for the nation and for humanity as a whole. A substantial financial commitment bolsters their endeavors, reflecting China's unwavering dedication to advancing its space capabilities. This financial backing has enabled the Chang'e program to push boundaries and achieve feats once thought unattainable. Moreover, China's strategic partnerships are broadening their reach in lunar exploration. A significant collaboration with Russia has been forged, culminating in a cooperation agreement for the development of a joint lunar research station. This alliance holds immense promise, potentially transforming the lunar landscape by introducing another major player into the fold. Beyond the Big Two Building upon this success, the Chandrayaan-2 mission, launched in 2019, aimed to further expand our understanding of the Moon with a sophisticated orbiter, lander and rover. Although the lander experienced a setback during its descent, the orbiter continues to orbit the Moon, collecting crucial data and imagery. India's participation in lunar exploration underscores the growing international interest in unraveling the mysteries of Earth's celestial companion. As nations around the world increasingly turn their gaze toward the Moon, India's contributions serve as a testament to the collaborative spirit driving humanity's quest for knowledge and discovery in the cosmos. Of particular note is Russia's collaboration with China in lunar exploration efforts. This partnership holds significant promise, leveraging the strengths and resources of both nations to advance our understanding of the Moon and its potential for scientific discovery. By joining forces with China, Russia reaffirms its commitment to exploring the lunar landscape and solidifies its position as a key player in the global space community. The Ambiguous Space Treaty the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 lays the foundation for international cooperation and peaceful exploration of outer space. However, amidst the lunar rush, its ambiguities are increasingly coming to light. The cornerstones of the treaty are essentially these. Peaceful use. The treaty restricts outer space activities to peaceful purposes, prohibiting weapons of mass destruction and military bases. Non-appropriation. No nation can claim sovereignty over celestial bodies like the Moon. They remain the province of all mankind. International cooperation. Encourages collaboration in scientific exploration and sharing information. 
However, the following ambiguities and challenges have come to light in recent times. Peaceful versus military. What constitutes peaceful remains open to interpretation. Does it encompass military satellites or dual-use technologies? This ambiguity creates potential loopholes for militarization. Resource utilization. While claiming celestial bodies is prohibited, the treaty lacks clarity on extracting resources like lunar water ice or rare earth metals. This sparks concerns about potential resource grabs and unregulated exploitation. Enforcement. The treaty lacks a strong enforcement mechanism, relying on goodwill and cooperation. As competition intensifies, ensuring adherence to its principles becomes more challenging. Recognizing these limitations, the Artemis Accords, signed by several nations, including the US, propose additional principles for responsible resource utilization and conflict prevention. However, major players like China are not signatories, highlighting the need for broader consensus and stronger frameworks. The upcoming review of the Outer Space Treaty presents an opportunity to address these ambiguities. Updating the treaty to include clear provisions on resource utilization, military activities and enforcement mechanisms would be crucial for ensuring long-term peace and sustainable development in space. With the importance of the Moon coming to light, the race to acquire its resources will only increase. The Moon is a stepping stone, a training ground for Mars and beyond its lessons paving the path for deeper exploration. Beneath its surface, water whispers promises of life and fuel, while rare minerals beckon innovation. The Lunar Saga continues, not as a race, but as a giant leap towards a universe where we no longer reach for the stars, but stand amongst them.